triangles, angles, add up to 180 degrees. Two 90 degree angles would be all 180 degrees, so you wouldn't have any more degrees left for the other angle. That's a fine way to put it. Okay? So, we have a triangle. That, that little thing right there. In general, this means this is an angle, yeah, but a 90 degree angle is a nice, specific uh, little, little, yeah. All right, so theta, okay, this thing is pronounced theta. It's a Greek letter. It's, I don't know if the Greeks ever use it for this purpose, but we use it a lot to represent an angle, okay? So we, use, we just use certain letters, variables, to represent certain kinds of things. X is your go-to variable for just like any old purpose. Uh, N, right, we just got done with chapter 12. N has to do with like how many of something there are, right? There's N terms. We're adding up N of these things, right? How many of something there are that you're counting up. So that's N. And theta is just one of those other letters that gets used, it gets used to represent angles. Okay, good so far? All right, so these sides have special names. Actually, one of them has a very special name that is always the same, and that's this side, what's this side called? Hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Make sure I spell it right. Right, which I didn't. Okay. Hypotenuse. Okay. So longest angle, or longest side, side across from the <coughs> biggest angle in any triangle, that's what the hypotenuse will be. Well, in, in a right triangle, the biggest angle will always be the 90 degree angle. Okay, the hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. Okay, that word across. Okay, we're going to re replace that word across with the word opposite, right? Across now, or opposite is now our word for across from, okay? So we got Rebecca and Brittany on opposite sides of the room. They're across from each other, they're opposite, all right? Um, so in reference to this angle right here, we put the angle right here as opposed to here, if we're talking about this angle, which side is opposite that angle? This side over here, the one that's going up right here. Okay, so this would be the opposite, but it's only called the opposite because this angle's right here. If this angle, or if we were talking about this angle right here, then this would be the opposite. That would be across from it. Okay. This side, now this side and the hypotenuse are both next to the angle. They're right next to it. Okay, but the hypotenuse is very special. It's always the hypotenuse. So this one that's next, the other one that's next to the angle. Not next to it's adjacent to. Okay. If you already know all that, maybe that uh, was boring. But I want to make clear all of the stuff that we're talking about. We, we want to get vocabulary out of the way. We want to know what these sides are called. So when I say opposite, when I say uh, adjacent and hypotenuse, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And when I say theta, you know how to write that. You know what that looks like. It's just a circle with a line through it. Okay, um, so when we talk about trig functions, they are not that big a deal. First we need a right triangle, and then we need a, a, an angle to talk about, okay? So we'll talk about one of the angles, it's up to us. Uh, so all we're looking at is like how can, what are all the different ways we can talk about this angle, okay? We can say how big it is, we can say how many degrees it is, right? But in a right triangle, strictly right triangle, strictly triangle with 90 degrees in them, with a 90 degree angle, another way that we can talk about them is to say, like, when I set this angle at, at you know, at this much openness, when this angle is this much open, then there are these ratios, like this side right here, if you consider this point way out here, then how, like if you, if you use this as a reference point, how far up this angle is versus how far it, like a straight path from this point to this point is, that's just something we call the sign. So it's just this height, right, vertically from, like straight up from this side, so this measurement right here over divided by the distance from here to there. So this side we call the opposite side, which is reference to this angle. And the size is always called the hypotenuse. 
Okay? So the sun is not as uh, strange and mysterious as it seemed to me when I first learned about it. It's just a ratio of the opposite side of the hypothesis. Which side is opposite will change depending on which angle we choose to call theta, which angle we want to know things about. Okay. Um, the cosine is similar to the sine, but it's not this distance versus this distance, it's this distance versus this distance. It's the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. That's just really a measure of, if I'm this point right here, how far horizontally versus how far straight from one point to the other, from point A to point B. What's the ratio of how horizontally away from the point I am to how far straight shot I am? Does all that make sense what I'm saying there? Okay, so it's just a ratio of how far away it is this direction and how far away it is straight there, okay? So the adjacent over the hypothesis. And all six trig functions really just go through all the possible ratios we can make. You have three sides, the six possible ratios that you can make, that's why there are six trigonometric functions. The tangent looks at you know, how, how far away this point is in, uh, in this way. How vertical is it over how horizontally far away is it? If you think about that, if you think about the opposite side, versus the adjacent, the tangent's like the slope of this line that the hypotenuse is on, right? Rise over run, does that make sense? That's all that's talking about. It's just like the slope of the hypotenuse. Okay, so if you take the opposite over the adjacent, you got to set up like this, like the slope of that hypotenuse <coughs> side. Okay. The cosecant, like we have these three and the other six would just be the reciprocals of each of those. And so the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. So it's hypotenuse over opposite. The secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent, just to take the cosine and flip it over. It's the, it's the reciprocal of the cosine. And the cotangent is the adjacent of the opposite, just the reciprocal of the tangent. Reciprocal of which? The sine. It's the reciprocal of the sine. It's 1 over, you know how the reciprocal can be expressed as 1 over whatever number, right? So, so 1 over whatever the sine is. If the sine is 3 fourths, the sine is 3 fourths, just for instance, then the cosecant is 1 over the sine, one over three over four. You just multiply one by the reciprocal of three fourths, you get four thirds, which is the same as if you just took three fourths and flipped it over and got four thirds. These are useful things to remember because we're not always given what sine is actually worth. Not always, sometimes we're just going to involve it in an equation. Okay. And the secant would be one over the what? The cosine. And the cotangent would be one over the, mm -hmm. the, the uh, process of elimination gives us as the reciprocal of the tangent. <coughs> so let's just you know, make up a triangle, and you're going to give me the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And it's not that hard to just go sine, cosine. Uh, tangent. Then you flip them all over, you got the other three. Okay. So, I'm going to make up a triangle, this right triangle. Six, eight, ten. Can you tell me the sine, cosine, and tangent? And then it's you get the tangent? Okay. Yeah. Why not? You don't know. Which angle am I talking about? 
the sine, cosine, and so on. This angle vector from the sine to cosine. So they're, they're very like close to each other. Like, like the sine of, of this angle is going to be some other ratio in respect to this angle. So the sine of this angle will be the same as some other trig value of, of this angle. So let's call this theta. That'll be our angle. I want you to ingest. Tell me all six trig values for that theta. values for that angle theta. Let's start with the sine. If we refer back to our notes here, the sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. So which side is opposite from theta? Six. Six. Over the hypotenuse? Ten. Is ten. So we can put three bits. If we know the sine, we can just flip it over and we have the cosine. 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 C. Uh, yeah. What? CFC. CFC, co-secant, co-secant, co-secant equals 5 over 3. And I'll write, write those down for you. Co-secant. At some point, I, I reckon you guys are going to ask me why the names of these things are so weird. And so the counterintuitive, something about them is counterintuitive, and the answer is I don't know. I'm sure they make sense in the actual language that they originate, but uh, to us they probably are a little bit confusing. All right, so the cosine is ratio of which two sides? Three adjacent and hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse, I got 8 over 10. 4 over 5. So once we know the cosecant, flip it over and we call it? Secant. S-E-C, secant is 5 over 4. So the, it's just like the cosecant about the co, it's just like secant. All right, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Which side is opposite? 6. 8 is adjacent. Why do not we use 10? Is it 10 next to it? Because it's the hypotenuse. Because it's hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is its own special thing, so the adjacent is the not hypotenuse side that's next to the angle. So opposite over adjacent, uh, three fourths. So then the reciprocal of the tangent, which is four thirds, is called what? Cotangent. And cotangent. C-O-T. Cotangent. Next thing we're going to do a triangle. It's not going to be complete. I want you to find just the sine and the cosine to save us some time here. But I want you to find the sine and the cosine of this next thing. sum of the squares of the two sides of any right triangle are equal to the sum of the square of the hypotenuse. Or for a triangle where C will always represent the hypotenuse, and A and B can represent either one of these other ones, so let's call this A and this B, or you can call this A and this B, it doesn't matter. C is the important, C is the hypotenuse. You take 12 squared plus uh, 5 squared equals whatever C is squared. We can solve for C. So that's your task. And then to find the sine and the cosine of that angle after you do that. You got 144 plus 25 equals C squared. That's 169 equals C squared. How do we find C? Uh, where, where? So where root of all sides, C is equal to plus or minus what? 13. 13. Are we going to do ne negative 13? No. Yeah. Probably not. No, that's silly. Oh, yeah. Negative sign. <laughs> well, yeah, what's the. 
How is that negative 13 inches? I don't understand how that works. It's possible to have a negative 13 inches, but you gotta have some kind of a reference. And this triangle is just free floating out in space, so we'll just call it 13. It <laughs> makes it a lot easier. Okay. Uh, and you will encounter negatives and stuff for side lengths, but again, they have to be in some kind of a system to be negative. It's gotta be a reference. All right, so the sign. Of this angle is the opposite over hypotenuse, which side is opposite theta? 12. 12 is opposite. 13 is adjacent, or hypotenuse. The cosine? 5, 5, 5 over 13. Okay, something I want you to get in the habit of and never break this habit is don't ever just write this. Okay. You have to write the sign of theta. Of theta, yeah. It would be like just writing sign. Huh? Will we be doing like, like where there's an angle measured? And then we'll you have to find the sign. Yeah, we'll get Crawling. Inverse trigonometric functions? Yeah. Oh, I hate that. Mm -hmm. I actually found that. I really should. All right. So, <laughs> 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 to say just S I N or C O N, and also, please, I mean, I'm not going to like, I'll give you a hard time. I'm not going to mark you off for it. But if you say cos and sin and tan. Oh, my God. Well, that's but your, your picture yeah. goes against everything you're just saying. Yeah, it's yeah so you're right. <laughs> it, unless you have a really clever wordplay, it's just going to annoy me as well. Okay? So what's the cos? What do you mean? What's the cos? Cos cosine. cosine. The cos of the triangle. The <laughs> sine, the cosine, the tangent, the cosine. What's the sine of the triangle? <laughs> huh? What's the sine of the triangle? I said what's the sine of the triangle? All right, so sine of nothing doesn't make any sense. The sine is a function. You have to put something in there to get something <coughs> out. Just to say sine doesn't make sense. It makes as much sense as just writing this. But if you saw that on a piece of paper and somebody asked you what that is, what would you say? Square root of nothing. Square root of nothing. Square, Square root of what? <laughs> right? You would ask them, you've got to put something in there. Okay, for those of you who like words like me, these two, and there's more, these two are examples of unary, unary, I think that's how you spell it, unary operators. And operation is like multiplication, addition, subtraction, division, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but like with multiplication, say, multiplication is a binary operator. This is a unary operator. What does bi mean? Two. And what does one mean? mean? One. So binary operators affect on two numbers, two times three, five times seven, right? You have to have two numbers. But if you use the square root, you can just take the square root of a number. It's like a property that a number has. The square root of four is two. Okay? So you gotta put something in there, sine of theta, square root of x, gotta be something there. Okay? Saying sin, cos, and tan are pet peeves of mine. Saying sine of emptiness is means See what we have next. Okay. So, for certain, well, actually, let, let me let me be a little more true. For all angles, all angles, all degrees, no matter how big the triangle is, the sine, the cosine, the tangent, all these things are always the same. So, whether see, it's got the uh, the sine of thirty is one half. So let me show you a, a, a triangle with about a thirty degree angle there. Okay. The sine will always, always be one half, no matter how big the triangle is. So this triangle could be life size. Right? This is exactly how big this triangle is supposed to be. Or, and, and you know, I don't know how long this is, but whatever it is, let's say this is two. This would have to be four. The sine is always one half. The opposite over hypotenuse is always one half. Two over four is one half. Or we could make it huge. I mean, we could fit the world in here. That's not the right color to start with. Blue. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh, that's a blue. There's the oceans. And then we got the, the lands. No, we need the lands. Uh, the US is Hey, it looks
looks like an earth. It just look at it real fast and look away. It looks like an earth. An earth. Okay, well, <laughs> even though this triangle is huge, it fits the whole world in it, however long this side is, divided, how, by, divided by however long this side is, will still be 1 over 2. Once you simplify it, it will be 1 half. Okay? Same is true for the cosine. The cosine is always the square root of 3 over 2. Okay, to be exact, square root of 3 over 2. All right. Well, let's fill this in so that we can also decide what the tangent is. So let's make it really simple. This is 1. This would have to be 2 for the sine to be 1 half. For the cosine to be root 3 over 2, how big would this side have to be? We don't even have to use the Pythagorean theorem. What's that? Root 3. It has to be the square root of 3. Why? Because? Because um, the hypotenuse is 2. Is 2. And the and adjacent over hypotenuse has to be <coughs> 3 over 2, right? Two. So this is already 2. Hypotenuse is 2, so this would have to be the square root of 3. We also see it here in this triangle. They have already drawn. Okay. So then, what's the tangent? Uh, one over root three. One over root three. Okay. If you were to look at the answers to this, like the way the book is filled out, this would not be what you see. Okay. So we've learned about this before. It's called rationalizing the denominator. Remember rationalizing the denominator? Ages ago, oh. this year. It's been a while. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's an old tradition where we don't like to have square roots in the denominator unless it's like the square root of 4, which we can call 2. So here's what we do we multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing so that the denominator comes out to be not a square root of a, just some number, like not the square root of 3. Multiply by the square root of 3 because what's the square root of 3 times the square root of 3? Three? 3. It's 3. Right? It's a number that multiplies by itself twice to give you 3. But that's doing by itself twice. So we get the square root of 3 over 3. That's what the tangent is. Let's look at 60 degrees. Why 60 degrees? Because 60 degrees is the other angle of this triangle. Whether you look here or you look here, let's see. The sine of 30 is 1 half. It's opposite over hypotenuse. Look at 60. 60 is right here. 60 is adjacent to this side wall. Okay. So the cosine is 1 half. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The cosine of 60 is 1 over 2. So the sine of 30 is the same as the cosine of 60. So the cosine of 30 would be the same as the sine of 60. There you go. That's not a bad idea. Now the tangent Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, so it's it's the reciprocal of one over root three. So it's root three over one. It's root three, root three over one. If you were to flip this over and rationalize that denominator, you'd find the the threes canceling and get just the square root of three. Or you can start with one over the square root of three and flip it over, you get the square root of three over one. Or you can just look at the triangle, and the tangent is opposite over adjacent square root of three. Over one. I'm going to help you fill in the rest of these. Actually, no, I'm not going to have you. I'm going to have you. You can see the two triangles right there, the 45, 45, 90, the 36, 30, 60, 90. And you can fill in the rest of this table right here. It's just the other three, right? We've got the sine, cosine, tangent. I'm going to do the same. You just got three more to fill in. Just take the ratios of the appropriate sides or flip over the functions that you know them to be the reciprocals of. Um, well, the, the cotangent of 30, uh, let's just take the reciprocal of what? Root 3 and 3. The tangent, which is root 3 over 3. So we got 3, oh, I think we're going to have to do some work over here, 3 over root 3. Right? Um, so we root 3, root 3, we get 3, root 3 over 3. So the 3's cancel out and we're left with root 3. So just the square root of 3. Look <coughs> at all the blanks they gave us. We have 
have to rationalize it in our engineering. All the things we have to fill in here. So we get 2 over root 2. 2 over root 2. We multiply by root 2 in the numerator and denominator. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. 2 times root 2 is 2 root 2. 2 is canceled. Square root 2 is always canceled. Secant of 60 is the reciprocal of the sine. The sine. So we take the sine, flip it over, we get 2 over root 3, multiplied by root 3. Two root 3 over 3. Nothing's going to cancel here. So 30, 45, and 60 are just three common degrees that, three common angles that we use a lot. And um, it's going to become part of like your memory, what the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 45, 60, 0, and 90 degrees are. Um, So in 13.2, uh, so we're in 13.2. We're going beyond angles that would fit inside of a triangle, a right triangle. Okay. So with a right triangle, you're limited. Since this one's definitely 90, these two have to total 90, right? So this angle could be 89. This could be one. This could be 8 to 9 and a half, and this could be a half. But there's a limit on it. It can't. Get like this other angle, neither of these angles can get up to 90. Right? So, can we go to angles bigger than 90? Of course, we can. Do those angles have sines, cosines, tangents, and so on? Yes, they do. We're going to look at the measure of that angle that, like, the, as distances, uh, and it's very similar to what we we're talking about uh, in triangles. But first, let's talk about some vocab like terminal side, coterminal, different things. Okay, so. Here is a typical angle in standard position. Okay, so in standard position, an angle, its vertex is at the origin. Okay, so whenever we see an angle just hanging out there, we kind of position, like we take our protractor, right? We put the, the origin right there. We start measuring over here. A positive angle goes like this. Counterclockwise. That's positive. Um, the initial side lies on the positive x axis. So, how many of you are familiar with measuring angles? Taking a protractor out and measuring an angle before? Yeah. You're good on that, you think? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here, I'll, I'll show you. Actually, I think I have a protractor. I'm sure I have a protractor. That's cool. Put the center of the protractor right there, right? We measure the angle from here over to there. That's the 
typical standard position angle. Measure from here to there. Can I make this smaller? Yeah. Even smaller? No. So what angle does it look like this is? That's about how that how big that angle is. So bigger than 90, uh, past 120, obviously, somewhere between 120 uh, and 130, maybe 124, 123, something like that. So, oh, I want um, So the side that we start on is called the initial side. We're starting there, right? Does that make sense? Start, initial, initial lines. Yeah? Mm -hmm. A use of the word initially you've heard before? Yeah. Okay. Initially, we do this to begin with. Okay. So, in a coordinate plane, an angle can be formed by fixing one ray. What's a ray? Like a line that just goes on in one direction. Just goes on forever in one direction. A line goes both directions, a ray goes from a point and then goes on forever. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, called the <coughs> initial. Okay. So you take two rays, you put them together, and you rotate one like this. Okay. We call it the on the side that the angle stops, or the terminal side where it terminates. Right. <coughs> Terminal is a word that, that means stops, ends. The terminator ends people. <laughs> The terminal side just ends up hanging. It's a little more. Actually, if you look at the uh, Earth, and I'm not going to bother drawing a great Earth for you again. This is the purple Earth. Use the bucket to Oh. Wow. Nice. Wow. Nice. At all. There's no gaps. No, that's got to work. Hold on. Now it's black. Got it. There we go. That's an Earth. Uh, so when the sun shines on it, let's see if we can make this happen. No. The sun shines no. on it. You know, it creates. This this is not going to represent it. So it's just more like that. Okay. So no no no. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can fill this in. Too. No. 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 <laughs> it didn't work. Uh. So I'll just fill it in. Okay, so the sun's shining right here. <laughs> so the, this side of the earth is, it has the sun on it, and this side is in, in darkness at, at nighttime. And this guy right here is called the Terminator. The line where the sun like, is between where the sun is shining and where the sun is not shining. So, yeah, here comes the Okay. Initial side and terminal side. We fill out the vocabulary. Initial side is where the angle starts, and the terminal side is where the angle ends. Standard position. What constitutes an angle in standard position? On the vertex axis. On the right. The vertex is at the origin, or right there at the origin. And you put the initial side on the x axis, the positive x axis. Can I interrupt your class for sure. just a minute? Yesterday I handed out the ACC plan test information a day early because I have to change the date to the next day. We have to do it on a B day, not an A day. So no. I have new no. <laughs> I have new papers and at the bottom these ones are in color and it says this is the real date and of course I'll put it in the announcements. But I need anyone taking the ACC plan to come up and get a new Instead of Tuesday, it will be Wednesday, and I have to mark your name off as I go. You can make them work and mark off their names. <laughs> what? They can mark off their names. They can find them faster than me. They're really good at about seeing their names right there. Right? 
And this one goes up uh, in this direction, let's say. Make it easier. What angle is that? Right. How, right. how many degrees is it? Mm -hmm. That's what we They're usually 80, 90. 90. Are you going to be that? Wait. <laughs> it's definitely 90. Can we say 90? Can we just or yes. 89. take it easy on Mr. Stewart? 90 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> okay. Now, if an angle is coterminal with this angle, it just starts its initial side at the same place. Well, all, all angles in, in standard position start their initial side at the same place. Its terminal side is in the same place, but it's not necessarily the same size. Okay, so let me show you. This, back around again. How many degrees is that angle? More than 360, no, what? 300, it's more than 360. It's more than, how much is 360? All the way around. And how much more than that? How much more than 360? 90 more. Okay. So this is what? 450. 450. How about this angle? It's definitely, no, 270. But it goes in the opposite direction. Does it matter? Yes. It's negative 270. Can you just like draw that arrow either way? Like Which one? On 90 degrees. Like, that like this way or that way? Yeah. No. Because one of the things is that the initial side, the initial side lies on the positive x axis. If we drew the angle from here to there, that would be the initial where it starts. This would be the terminal where it ends. This arrow indicates. We started bending the angle here and stopped bending the angle here. <sighs> Seems silly, right. but uh, there you go. It becomes important when things are turning and spinning and one is turning the opposite direction. We need some kind of a reference system to say this is going the opposite way of that. Okay. So a coterminal angle is an angle in standard position. Well, let's say two angles. Angles in standard position with the same, same what? Same uh, initial side? The all, all angles in standard position will have the same initial side to start with. That's why I put that. So they also have the same what? Terminal, Terminal side. Very not big space. So let's find some coterminal angles. I'll give you an angle, we'll find a coterminal angle. Okay? You think you got a way to do that? Maybe draw a picture, see what you think. I'll give you the angle, I'll try and draw it for you. No, you draw it if you want to draw it. You know, that'll become part of your, your strategy. 
Uh, 67 degrees. So coterminal one, they, they're both going to start on the x-axis, and they're going to both rotate, well, about the origin. Uh, we just showed how you can have a negative angle also end in the same place. I'm just going to have the terminal signs end and be in the same place. Find two, find one positive and one negative. What is it? 120 is coterminal with 67? I don't know. Okay, let's see. 167, so let's start at the origin. Our initial sign is on the positive x-axis. We move up to 67, let's say that's about there. Okay. So that is a good, a good, good estimation of 67 degrees, I would guess. So. So where's 120? Start here and go, well, how far is that? How many degrees is it from here to there? 180. 180. How many degrees is it from here to there? 90. 90. So 120 is just somewhere in here, right? So are they coterminal? Do they have the same terminal side? Hmm? Negative 120. Negative 120? See, negative 120 would just go about. Makes you think 283. 293. 293? Negative. Negative 293. Put me right there. How can you be so sure? Because 270 We established a minute ago that this is 270. From 360. Okay, from 360. Uh, which will leave you, well, how much is left in a full circle? There's another way to do that. Okay. How about a positive one that goes, it's going to have to go past 67 and go all the way around again, back to the same terminal side. Mm -hmm. What's that? 360. Just 360 degrees? No. Mm -hmm. Plus 67, right? If you if you plus 67 right now, and then you go full circle from that terminal side, you'll go around 360, but end at the same place, right? So if you start at 67, then add 360. Well, that must put you right back at the same place, facing the same direction as when you went 67 degrees. Right? So 427, yeah, 427 is also coterminal. So starting here, going around, no, wrong way, wrong way, going past 67 degrees, coming all the way around, and going there again. So if we start at 67 and we go in the positive direction, 360, well then we're moving more in like positive, positive, positive directions, right? And so that's gonna move us towards like a positive coterminal angle. If we want to find a negative coterminal angle, let me, let me do my red here. So notice this red one right here, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go positive 67 uh, and go back how far? Three, two, three. 
360. In the negative direction, 360. So if we start at 67, I should really make this degree. That will make more sense. Uh, there we go. So if we start at 67, instead of adding 360, we go backwards 360. That should also land us pointing in the same direction as someone who's at 67 degrees. That's still negative 2. Right. Who said take 67 away from 360? I think that was uh, whoever's looking down at our lap right now. And that, did you say take 360 and subtract 67 to find 293? Yeah. Yeah. But it just would have to be made positive, or negative, right? Okay. Well, if you take 67 minus 360, it's the same idea, but we don't have to tell it to be negative. It will be negative. It will be a negative angle. Okay. So we found some coterminal angles, positive and negative. What about um, 472 degrees? Can you find a negative angle that's coterminal with 472? What did you just try? Going to 472 and going back 360. So you went back 360, so you subtracted 360. Yeah. What happens when you subtract 360 from this? Is it negative? No. no. Subtract 360. Subtract 360 again, right? Every time we go in one direction or the other, starting at our, our original angle, 360 degrees, we find another coterminal angle, right? How many coterminal angles are there for 472 degrees? How many exist in the universe? An, inf an infinite number of coterminal angles, 472. Go and just even just negative angles, right? There's an infinite number of negative angles. Just keep subtracting 360. You're just going backwards and backwards and backwards and backwards and backwards, 360 degrees. Okay? Coterminal angles? No good? Okay. Um, How do we measure uh, distances? In what? Meters. Meters? Is that it? What? Yards? Yards? Inches. Inches. So angles is measured in degrees. But what I'm trying to suggest here is, I mean, we can measure distance in anything we want. We, we could measure them in Jessica's. We could just like have Jessica lay down, we put a mark here at her feet, one at her head, and then just take that out there. And when I, I drove this many Jessica's today, okay? No one would have any idea what you're talking about. Like it's just that we use these miles and meters and stuff uh, and, and kilometers as a standard unit of measure so that everybody knows what you're talking about. So then when you say you went five miles, people have an idea about how far you went, right? I know that five miles is like quarter of the way from here to New Zealand. So that's kind of not terribly far, but it's kind of a far run if you ran five miles. It's pretty good. Okay. So just like there's different ways to measure distance, inches, meters, feet, miles, there's also another way to measure angles besides degrees. Okay. So that's what we're going to learn. Um, and it's not just. It's not what? It's not just. No, it's not just. It's not how we measure these. These angles, okay? So I want you to try and break this, this paradigm right now. Degrees are not synonymous with angles. Angles are, are a thing that you measure just like you measure distances or weights or masses or anything that you can measure. Okay? There's two pretty standard ones, degrees, and this other one's called radians. Alright? And we measure them in different ways. Like the way you measure an angle in degrees is different from the way you measure them in radians, like the definition. All these standard units of measure, like the mile and the and the meter and the kilometer, all like this, they're based on something, right? 
What are degrees based on? How far away it is from the uh, initial site to the terminal site. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of like that, that arc distance from, from here to there, sort of. Like, if you were to make a story about where degrees came from, sums it up. I mean, that's not the real story. I don't know if there is a real story. But uh, I believe it was the Babylonians who count in base 60. We count base 10. 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then we start over. We move to the next uh, placeholder. Oh, that's terrible. So they go like... 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way to 59, and then once they get to 60, then they move over. Like 61, 62. No, no, no. Now it's 1, 0 is 60. Just like one zero for us is ten. Oh, but that their makes numbers sense. are totally different. Yeah, the numbers. Are, yeah, they have different symbols. Their symbols are actually their numbers are written in columns, so they don't really have symbols. And then they just put a bunch of triangles called cuneiform in this column, the ones column, and then move over to the sixties column, and then move over to the thirty-six, you know, the uh, thirty-six hundreds column. Okay. That sounds awful. Is it? So it's normal for them, yeah. If you count a base 10, it's normal. Count a base 2, it's normal. There's a, a base system called dozenal, or decimal. Dozenal is base 12. And some people think we should teach elementary students base 12 instead of base 10. Because it would be normal to them. It seems so strange to adults, and that's why it will never happen. Because they'll complain that you're teaching our kids which or something. But that's not the case. It's just base 12. Now, is base 60 so bad? Do you think you could ever count, get used to counting in base 60? You do it every day. You count on base 60 every day? For sure. When do you count on base 60? Time. Time. Oh, 60 what? minutes, move over, one hour. 60 more minutes, another hour. Right? We, we separate in the columns too, but we just have symbols that aren't a bunch of triangles. We don't use cuneiform, we just use our symbols in base 10. Okay, we got 60 of these, we move over to there. We got one, it's one o'clock. 60 more of those go by, it's two o'clock, two hours of you can go into seconds, right? 60 seconds, roll it over to minutes, 60 minutes, roll it over to hours. So the 24 hours roll that into one day. You can quite keep going. But um, radians, just another way to measure angles. That's what we're getting at. Okay? And the way we measure degrees, it just comes basically from hey, a circle. Let's say all the way around the circle is 360, divisible by 60. Okay? Babylonians, base 60. Um, but that doesn't really give you a notion of like how big the circle that you're talking about is. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, so radians, the, that's, they're more based on how big is the circle, right? Is it, is it a tiny little circle? Or is it a really big circle? Okay, that's kind of what it comes from, okay? But I'm gonna give you the basics. I'm gonna give you the basics of uh, what radians are. How, like how many degrees match up to how many radians, okay? So we got a full circle. Okay. This is, what I'm about to make is called the unit circle. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna print these out and you can have them for next time, so you can just fill them in, okay? Or you can print out this, what I'm about to do, or, or look at this online for your homework or whatever. But I'll, I'll print one out so you don't have to draw too much detail here. I'll, I'll have one printed out for you next class. All right, so here we have, this is how we kind of label our unit circle. Let's say 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. These are the popular ones. Uh, how far is this? This is 30 degrees away from 90, so this is big one. That's yeah, from here all the way to there, 120, 30 more degrees. How about this one? 135, 45 degrees away from 90. This one? 150, 30 more degrees. There's no big surprise there. Zero degrees, of course. Anybody know the formula 
look for the circumference of the circle? R squared? Yeah. No. That's area. Circumference equals 2 pi r. Area of pi r squared. What's that? It's an area of pi r squared. It's an area of pi r squared. Yes, the area is pi r squared. The circumference is 2 pi r. I don't know. You can. There's two options, chance. All right. So, let's see. If we go a full, full circumference, okay, what a radian is, is the ratio of the arc length. So the arc length, like a circumference of a circle, that's an arc length. It's like all the way around. An arc length can be like just a piece of that though. Okay, so that's an arc length. So how big is that arc length divided by how big is the radius of the circle? Okay, so it's like a ratio of the, the circumference to the radius. So this full thing, how big is the, the arc length? The arc length is how long this is. Like if you were to lay a string down around here and take that string off and measure it, that's the arc length. Okay. So it's all the way around. If you measure all the way around, the full arc length, we call that the circumference. Okay. Uh, so the full circumference is, uh, 2 pi r, so the number of radians is equal to uh, how big the, what the ratio is of the, the arc length to the radius, okay? So we take the circumference and divide it by r, we'll also divide this by r, and a full circumference over a radius is equal to 2 pi, because the r is going to out. So the, for a full, all the way around circumference, the the ratio of circumference or arc length to radius would be 2 pi. Okay. 2 pi is all the way around. 2 pi. Just like this is 360 all the way around, this is 2 pi all the way around. It's zero radians. Right here, all the way around is 2 pi radians. Right. It effectively is the same as 360. The, the actual is different, but it's the same. It's the same. When, it, when you go around 360, you've gone around 2 pi radians. Okay, so if that's two pi radians, how far is this? Just one from the here to there. Uh, one pi, one half of two pi, which would just be pi, two pi divided by two, which is just pi. Have you guys done radians before? Anybody? No. No, okay. Well, you're catching on real nicely. How about from here to there? Pi times a half. Pi times a half, it's a half of this. So it's half pi, so it's pi over two, we say. How about from here to there? Quarter of pi, pi over four. Sharp class. <clears throat> How about from here all the way to there? Pi and a half. Pi, one pi and one half of a pi. Yeah. Yeah. Or three halves of pi. Three half. half and a half and another half. Times three. Three pi over two, three halves times pi. This? Yeah. <laughs> fourth of, but actually, is this a fourth of a pi of a pi is a full circle pi? It would be an eighth of a pi. Oh, yeah. Right? When we take pi and make it into pi e. Yeah. And that's part of the thing, that's part of something that uh, some people think we should not teach you about 2 pi. Why is all the way around the circle 2 of something? Why isn't it just 1 of something? So there's this movement we call 2, just like the people who want to teach you uh, dozenal. I want to teach you that 2 pi is tau. It's tau. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a, there, there's a, a, a YouTube channel that I like. It's called, uh, what's it called? Number file. Okay. I don't know how that all works down. But the file is like a word. P-H-I-L-E is like a, a suffix that means, like, I like this thing a lot. Number file. I like numbers. Okay. Um, so there, there's a battle between a guy who thinks it should be called pi and somebody who thinks it should, we should use the tau instead of pi. Well, anyway. 
We'll fill this in a little bit more, okay? But first we're gonna just talk about radians, all right? Um, two worlds of degrees and radians, we want to be able to convert between the two, just like we want to convert between miles and kilometers when we cross the border in Canada. We want to know what's going on. That's, that's, just, that's just giving it away. Okay, so if we, let's say that there's about 1.6 kilometers in a mile, okay? So if I've gone 500 miles, how many kilometers have I gone? How do I convert that into kilometers? Times 1.6 kilometers per one mile. It's called that dimensional analysis and it sounds really fancy and like you should be in college before you're doing it. But it's just converting one from one unit into another unit. So the miles unit into the kilometers unit. We're multiplying by 1.6, why? Because there's this equivalence between 1.6 kilometers and one mile. And if you think about it, when you multiply these two things, the mile units cancel out, the kilometers units are left. 500 times 1.6 is how many kilometers we've got. Okay, figure it out if you want. Let's speed along here and figure out a way. I've got a question. I was just going to say, how many kilometers? It only has kilometers? Well, then it has like a small mass power. Oh, the miles are small? Yeah. You get it. Huh? Canada? You got it from Canada? I don't know where it's from, but it's probably from must Canada. Must believe all I can. <laughs> Probably used, I guess. Yeah. As long as somebody from Canada. Probably. Um, Check it for us. Yeah. Tracking. Stop. It's Canadian enough. They're watching you, Chance. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So now let's convert from degrees to radians. Convert from degrees to radians. 75 degrees, I made it so that it wasn't one of those angles that we've already looked at. Right. Using the same idea, we want to cancel out degrees and leave radians. And what we need is some amount of degrees that's equal to some number of radians. We have lots of different examples. We just want an easy one. So which one of these is like an easy comparison? This many degrees is this many radians. Fractions involved, it's just straightforward. Maybe. Zero. Zero, that's going to cause a problem if we put zero and zero, because zero radians and zero degrees. So, and what have zero in the denominator? It's, it's, got zero. Thing? it's true. But that's not going to work. How about 180 and pi? Right? We could use 360 and 2 pi. We could use 45 and pi over 4. We could use uh, 90 and pi over 2. These are weird, though, because they have fractions. But if we do 180 and pi, it's nice. It's a nice, uh, clean conversion ratio. Okay. So if we want to convert from degrees to radians, we want to cancel out those degrees, 180 degrees, and leave our radians. Okay. Now, the degrees cancel. We get 75 divided by 180 times pi. Uh, we'll simplify as much as possible. Uh, divide by 5, we get 12, 13. over 36, which both are divisible by 3. What? You got that? Both divide both by 5, and then I'm also going to divide these both by 5. 5 pi over 9. No, no, 12. Yeah. 5 pi over 12. Great. That's the, that's the radian that is the same as 75 degrees. 5 pi. Take a look. We can count this off in pi over 12s. Okay? Here, let's go back here. I'll just uh, throw in a surprise here. This is pi over 6. Okay. A sixth of pi, just like you were calculating before. It's a sixth of pi, just like 30 is a sixth of the way to 180. Pi over 6 is a sixth of the way to pi. So where's pi over 12? 1 pi over 12. 
5 or 12B, if this is pi over 6. 6, 15, 15 degrees, right there, like half of that, right? Pi over 12 would be half of a pi over 6. It takes 12 of them to make 1 pi. 6 is, 6 only takes 6. So here is a pi over 12, where's 2 pi over 12? Two pi over twelve. Two pi over twelve. Think about that. Two pi over twelve. Cancel those. Pi over six. Two pi over twelves are pi over six. Thirty degrees. How about three pi over twelve? Two pi over twelve. Three pi over twelve. Forty five. Forty five. Three pi over twelve. Four pi over twelve. Five pi over twelve. Six pi over twelve. Right? Yeah. Half of pi? Okay, so back here at 5 pi over 12, these are 75. I believe it. So real quickly, if we're going to convert from degrees to radians, we multiply in a way that cancels out the degrees. But if we want to can't, if we want to convert from radians to degrees. We want to convert 3 pi over 7. Yes, times 180 over pi. Okay, now the thing that I want to bring your attention to is that pi's do cancel, but I don't know if I've, if I've ever successfully cut people off at the path right here, okay? Pi is not the units, okay? Just like degrees are the units of, of degrees, right? Degrees are the units of degrees, and we put a little symbol there to, rep to represent degrees. We do not have a symbol to represent radians. And to think that pi is the symbol that represents radians would be a mistake. Pi is not like degrees. It's not a unit. It's a number. It's 3.14. Right? 3.14 would be halfway, 3.14 radians would be halfway around the circle. Right? So it's not one pi radians like pi is a degree symbol and pi is a radian symbol. If you want to have that, then write radians write radians, okay? So anyway, the, the radian units cancel the pi's as numbers, 3.14 divided by 3.14 cancels out. And then we multiply these together, we get uh, 3 times 180 is, Five forty? Five forty. Five forty, yeah. Uh, sounds like snowboard. Five forty over seven. Five hundred and forty sevenths uh, degree. To reiterate, pi is not the symbol that means radians. Because, for one thing, you could have three radians. You don't have to have a pi. Pi is not the symbol that means radians. It's just a number that the circle breaks down into. Where's three radians? Just out of curiosity. Where'd you put three radians? It's just a guesstimate here. Right here? That's three radians? Let me jump to the cheese. A little before 180, because how many radians is this? 3.14. So 3.14 would get you to pi. So a quarter of actual pi would be 6 pi over 12 on this side? 6 pi over 12 on this side. An actual quarter of a pi yeah. would be 6 pi over 12, yeah. or simplify it down to pi over 2. Yeah. yeah. You got it. All right, so here we have, right here, right in your face, almost there, just a way to convert from radians to degrees. You see how they write radians here? They don't just leave it behind. They're showing you that you have to write the word radians for it. You should know that it's in radians, or be told that it's in radians somehow. Okay? We also have these formulas that follow nicely from things like pi r squared and 2 pi r. Find the arc length, which for some reason the arc length, A and L, is represented by, some, for some reason, S. OK? 
Okay? So here's S. It's just the measure if I were to take a string and put it along here, take that string off, lay it flat, measure it with a ruler, that's the arc length. If you were to walk around here, how far did you walk? What is your your odometer read? Pedometer, whatever that is. Uh, that's the arc length, how far that is from one point to the other. Okay? So the arc length is equal to R times theta, which isn't a surprise because the arc length over R is the definition of a radian. Okay? Not one radian, but it's the definition of the angle measured in radians. If you take the arc length from here to there, divide it by the radius, that ratio is how many radians that is. Okay? As opposed to degrees, where degrees is, you know, how many degrees have you gone if all the way around is 360? So if you want to find the arc length, multiply r times theta. If you want to find the area of a little sector, okay, it's half r squared times theta. Right? Theta kind of takes care of the pi of pi r squared. Makes sense. A full area of a full circle would be pi r squared. When you use radians, make sure this is in radians. Also this, if you're going to use these formulas, make sure they're in radians, which means they're not in Degrees. You don't use degrees in these formulas. You convert them to radians if they're in degrees to start with, right? And they take care of all that pi stuff, like from two pi r and pi r squared. Okay. And that makes sense. This, yeah. Which one is called like theta or r squared? So Which call this? I don't know. I just remember finding certain connections of it. In what class? Geometry. Geometry. Did you even call it arc length? Geometry and algebra. They don't share terms. Okay. Geometry happens a lot in the plane and algebra. Algebra's geometry happens a little more out in just space. Like there's not really the coordinates of these points. So let's throw an example out there. Uh, talking about a sector, which is like a piece of pi, p, i, e, pi. It's like a slice of pizza. That's what a sector is. Let's say that it has um, an R of 3 and an S of uh, 6. Okay. So it's got an arc length of 6 and a radius of 3. Theta is 2. So I already told you the arc length. You use the arc length and the uh, radius to find Um, so we take, yeah, we take uh, S equals R theta. Uh, we plug everything we know in there. 6 is equal to 3 theta. So theta is equal to 2. 2 what? 3. 2 radians. Okay. What? It said 6 equals 6, though? Or no? Yeah, 6 does equal 6. Like, if we put this back in, that would confirm that we were right about finding theta to be 2. No, this would, 6 would be equal to 3 times 2 radians. 3, what? 3, like, inches or 3 meters or whatever. Okay. So 3 inches times 2 radians gives us 6 inches. Uh, so now we can plug it into the other formula by the area of this, this thing. Right? So area is equal to 1 half times r squared times theta, which we found to be 2. So a equals 9, let's do that 18, divided by 2, so 9. Area is 9. If this is in inches, and this is in inches, then this is measured in inches squared. So 9 little squares can fit inside that. 